Okay, we're back here live, theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is Silicon Angle's coverage of O'Reilly Media Strata Conference. Um, getting winding down on the most amazing show, day three of what we call blanket coverage, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, interviews from nine to six every day. I'm John Furrier, I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of uh, wikibon.org, and we've got our friend Ed Dumbbell back. Ed, day three, we're, uh, we're winding down, we're just, <laughs> We're all hitting the wall here, but uh, like you <laughs> have been, you and Alistair are just amazing. I mean, everybody always tells John and me how amazing you know, we are and how, how we keep going. You guys are really, I have to say, um, cogent, insightful, um, nonstop. So again, congratulations on a fantastic, insightful event. Thanks. You know, I Cogent's probably overselling it for me at this point, <laughs> but uh, I'll take it where I can get it. Auto autopilot. <laughs> <And laughs> <laughs> You know, this, this is a heck of a toy that you get to play with, so you certainly get a, a high off the energy. Yeah, you know, nice the, the consistent theme we hear from folks, and certainly we use the term intoxicated, um, uh, intoxication uh, around some of the concepts here, because there's a range of uh, topics that Strata really kind of teases out. Again, we talked about when you were on last time, but you know, mentally it's intoxicating, and, and to me, yeah. it's, it's, the, it's, it is, it's, it's, it's like a TED at a level that just, is not so much <laughs> in, in the clouds and just you know, fantasizing about the future, it's a, a little bit of both. You get you know, the, the intoxication of, of the future, uh, inventing and dreaming up the future, and also, but you're down at the tactical, operational, you know, execution level of, of both geeks and business. So, um, it's exciting. And so with that, what are you now, end of the show's coming down, what are you seeing as kind of bubbling up now that all the hype is dialed down over the, over the distributions, <laughs> things are settled in, uh, we're getting ready to close out the show. Right. What, what's your takeaway right now? You know, I think, I said at the beginning that uh, we were just getting down to work. And I think that really is my takeaway that the people here that have come as attendees are ones who do want to get down to, down to work. We kind of passed this big conceptual stage about big data and we're talking about how it makes it work. And you talked about how broad this conference is. And it, it is because we take in right from the data infrastructure through to management factors and business strategy and everything in between, you know, even in the, even in the science, there's data science, there's VIRs, there's the actual coding. It's such a broad, um, <coughs> domain, but actually it needs to be a broad domain because what we're doing is, with big data is modeling customers, modeling the real world, modeling people, and it's a vertical activity. This is not your old IT, right? This is something that touches business and ripples all the way down through to the actual tech at the bottom. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see the enterprise IT guys here, um, but again, it's a big canvas, and, and the paint brushes are out, a lot, of, a lot of things are starting to be scratched out in terms of, of designs and architectures. Mm -hmm. um, so before we get into that, I want to kind of ask you just kind of a, on a different tangent around communities, right? Because obviously you guys have a really uh, developing community with Strata around now it's global, um, multiple yeah. venues. Um, are there any communities that are coming out that you see developing fast that, that uh, aren't necessarily on everyone's radar screen right now that, that, that surprises you or maybe not surprises you in terms of new kind of flowers that are blooming with communities? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think in, in a way we, form, we form communities at the, at the show. Um, the one thing that interests me I think in particular is where the user experience community are going to come in uh, and interact with data. Because you know, how you even create interfaces, how you collect data, very much affects what you can do with it, affects the results you get, and also how you communicate it. Even you know, the, the, the layout of a, a screen can really have a dramatic impact on data-driven decision making. So for me, one of the things that is going to be continually interesting is how we grow uh, the overlap with, with those communities. We certainly found, you know, we take the show all over the place and uh, we announced the dates earlier um, today for, we have uh, Strata London in, the end, in November and uh, Strata New York with Hadoop World in October. And you see, particularly in London, you know, where there's a big design culture, uh, that the user experience element definitely comes out a lot more uh, over there. So had some interesting keynotes this morning. Um, 
We heard things like a little semantics goes a long way. That was kind of a good, good <laughs> mantra. And then uh, Nathan Mars from Twitter, John, was talking about how to, how to plan for humans to fail. Right. And a new data model for <laughs> the fail way opportunity, humans. Uh, so that was interesting um, to hear Twitter up talking about immutability and sharing that data model. And, um, some of it seemed you know, quite intuitive, but it's not applied broadly, is it? Right. Uh, you, you know, I was saying when I was back on here yesterday about the three things, the three places uh, that there's value in this industry, and the third one I said was people. And I think they really brought it out. That you're not, unless you understand the fact that this actually is all about people at one degree or another, you're going to make a mistake. Um, Jeannie Harris yesterday in her, her great keynote was talking about the things that you miss every time, you know. And if you were born a little too late to realize it from the BI and uh, analytics world, you're going to make the same mistakes again in big data. And, and one of them is there is no magic bullet, right? There is no software package you can install that mitigates all the uh, people factors in an organization or even around a product. So being cognizant of people and you know, I have this mantra that, uh, that computers, it sounds very simple, but computers ought to help people. But very often the way in the IT industry you build things where people need to bend around our product. And what we're hearing a lot more of is this kind of mantra coming out again, that we should build, thing, build things with humans in mind, even if it's you know, ba data backends. Yeah, and, and you have <clears throat> some of the hyperscale guys like Twitter and obviously Facebook and Google leading that charge. And you see here at the conference uh, a number of the sort of big industry IT you know, uh, uh, vendors uh, as sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, you have, you uh, had set up for this event uh, some tracks on enterprise IT. Right. Do you see those kind of worlds coming together that where the hyperscale world is a harbinger for the traditional enterprise? Um, will they essentially just outsource it uh, to the enterprise? Uh, or will those worlds sort of stay separate for quite some time? What's your well, view? Well, no, I, th I, I think what the trend, I mean, the whole big data industry, in fact, and the trends we're following here is technology that was invented to serve web scale operations uh, brings benefits to, to enterprises and Really that's kind of the story we're following as these things come down. So one of the key things um, that I talk about a lot that web scale operations are going for themselves is agility, right? You know, typically enterprise IT is all about governance and policy and making sure nothing goes wrong. Where, but at the expense sometimes of innovation and agility. And from the open, before the web world, the open source world as well, you know, we've already seen a lot of open source methodology uh, and agile and collaborative programming come into the enterprise. I think in the data side as well, um, that ability to move quickly and iterate is something that's going to come from the web scale companies through the technology and also the methodology into the enterprise. Well, you've seen, you know, once an idea gets out there, Google published a paper, you know, I've been talking about Stuxnet all week, and now we see this <laughs> story today where, you know, uh, essentially taking a playbook out of Stuxnet. So the ideas get out there. Mm -hmm. The question I, I've always had though is will the enterprises end up just sort of outsourcing that to you know, cloud players, the sort of Nick Carr big switch model, or will they actually develop that expertise in-house? It's, it's, it's kind of gone both ways. Yeah. You know, for a while it was like, wow, these guys will, won't be able to compete with cloud service providers, but you know, the cl private cloud has sort of you know, made some progress there, and I wonder from a, you know, a scale and you know, plan for human failure, if, if, if that level of skill will sort of repeat itself once that knowledge base gets out there within the large enterprises. And, uh, you know, I, there's a spectrum, right? Uh, mm. um, there's always a spectrum between people who kind of get it, people can move with this kind of thinking, and those who just want, who just, you know, it's not a priority, or they're milking a cash cow, and eventually they drop off the end. Generationally, very few companies survive more than a cup more than a couple of times around the block. If you look at the way people are falling out of the, uh, you know, the top 100 stocks these days, they just drop off and you don't hear about them again. What I do think is very interesting about the technology we're, world we're in now is because we're so networked, right? First mover advantage is huge. If you get in and lock it down, get control of the network, um, you know, obviously in the web that's a very obvious what the network is, but as more things are digitally mediated via social and, and apps, there's a network effect available to a lot more organizations. So suddenly your brick and mortar stores are entirely vulnerable to um, people who will create an, an app to sell it, you know, maybe just a third of their product line, and then zap, right? And that, that's the end of them. So I think the laggards will be treated less kindly by uh, you know, the, the general conditions of doing business now. 
we have a story breaking on siliconangle.com this morning that's uh, going viral. It's an exclusive report uh, from some of our sources uh, about the Iranian hacker threat, death threats on Joe Biden and also um, commandeering the drones and that's uh, come in from uh, uh, a white hat tipster um, and we validated that and it's, it's significant. And I want to bring that up because uh, we chatted about data and the, the impact of data and, and um, scarcity and what's not scarce and data will be scarce and will be a resource. You know, and as, and uh, as uh, you know, Tim O'Reilly said yesterday is that you know, data is where the value will be created, not the software anymore, and it's mm -hmm. going to shift. Um, and I've been doing my rant around the whole, you know, Second Amendment, data is the, the you protect your data, the right to bear data is a, is, a, is a theme that no one's really talking about because if you think about whoever controls the data, and I think we might have been talking about this briefly, um, is in control, and that could be a government. But yet, um, these hacks are um, bringing out data that's private about government installations, people involved in nuclear research um, mm -hmm. in the U.S., and it's really sensitive data. Yeah. So, you know, and also Tim brought up the black hat scientists yesterday, so security has been our top story today. So, you know, this is a really big society, global problem, not just for the U.S. Right. Uh, What's your take on that? You know, I mean, his, historically, it's information that wins wars, right? World War II, the Enigma machine, and all that. Tactics is part of it. This has always been true, uh, you know, since Roman times and yeah. basic ciphers. So we're deaf, but Again, just to refer to what I said to Dave, what we have now is huge network effects, right? The, uh, the how fast that information can get out and be used to threaten people, whereas before, if a bad actor found the information out, they didn't have the means of dissemination to do too much, to do too much with it. Um, mm -hmm. So I, my feeling is, I, I'm certainly not an expert, that we're going to go through a, a few cycles of really oscillation before we figure out what not to do. And you know, it may be a case, in, we, we narrowly avert a disaster through nuclear non-proliferation, right? When we suddenly we realize the risk and step back from it. It's entirely possible that at some point we'll feel that information is going that way and we will have to take a step back from our capabilities and say, yes, just because we can use data sets A, B, and C to derive this dangerous fact D doesn't mean that we should, you know, or that we should let that information out. Yeah, and again, I bring this up only because it's a provocative, intoxicating kind of conversation to think about, and just it's mind-bending just to kind of put your arms around it, but it's a social science issue. Absolutely. And, and uh, we had uh, Kenneth uh, Kukier on about his new book, uh, Big Data Analytics, A Revolution. And you know, these are concepts that bring on all the thought leaders, from Clay Shirky to uh, IBM, uh, IBM executives and industry actors to step up yeah. and, and participate, and really, I don't want to say volunteer, but be active in the discussion. We know there's a, there's a reason I like to involve a variety of people in the conference, and we had uh, Kate Crawford, a great social scientist, give a keynote this morning. Um, one of the things I often wish for when we start to get into these conversations with, frankly, you know, IT guys, right, is this emergency button that like, calls a historian and an anthropologist, and maybe a politician as well, <laughs> so we actually can help <laughs> understand what the hell's going on. Because yeah. frankly, we're out of our depth in some of these things, mm, yeah. and, but we actually have the power to control it. Yeah. So we need to be educating, we need to be having the conversations It's a blind spot, with the if, you, if you're in power. IT, it's, like, it's a blind spot, right? So yeah. IT are doing their thing, you need to have that flash mob of expertise instantly to come to the table. We don't <coughs> know what we're doing half the time, and we need to be able to explain what we're doing with data to people with power, we cannot just say they don't get it, right? There needs to be a lot better dialogue yeah, that was than we're managing right now. Uh, presentation, she's talking about some work that she did with Dana Boyd on solving for biases in the data, and, because you always say, ah, oh, the data doesn't lie, well, uh, but if I don't understand what it means, it's, We have two minutes left, we have two minutes left, but I want to get to, um, to your personal life, Ed, and ask you a few <laughs> personal questions. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite color? No. Um, couldn't resist the Monty Python jokes, but uh, <laughs> kind of show my age. I didn't um, come here for an argument. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are you working on these days? Actually, last time we, uh, on a personal level, you have your personal interest besides Strata, doing mm -hmm. an amazing job here. You, you have some stuff going on uh, in your personal professional life, non-Strata life. You're, you're editor, you're exploring <coughs> concepts. Right. What are you working on and, and what's got your attention in, uh, these days? We know a variety of things, to be honest. It's kind of exhausting, but, so as well as the three Stratas uh, with uh, California, New York, and London, I also uh, am putting together the Open Source Convention, which is in Portland in, in July, and you guys should come along Oscon. to that. Yeah, OSCON, yes. which is I think amazing, we great you, yeah. fun. And you know, open source is the default these days in, uh, in a lot of companies, so it, that's becoming a much, uh, you know, an ever-growing and more exciting field to be in. I'm fascinated by the future of programming and the ways in which 
uh, you know, network programming and the kinds of parallel things we're having to do now is affecting the way uh, people have to learn to code and the kind of code that people need to write to get things done. I'm also, as you mentioned, uh, editor of the big data journal, which we have the first issue uh, happily, you know, wonderful glossy thing I can hold in my hands uh, that we launched uh, this week. So that's, you know, where can they get Quite the big data? Is that, print, is that print or is that online as well? That is both. You know, okay. it turns out that about 80% 80, 80 of people read it online, but okay. we have some very beautiful uh, things. We actually worked with Rick Smolin, you know, who did the, uh, mm -hmm. big data the great photography. big data project. Yeah, yes. So we have one of his photos on the, the cover, which is the Domino's uh, pizza delivery routes in Manhattan. I've never seen anything more yeah. prosaic uh, rendered <laughs> so more beautifully, these electric uh, blue trails <laughs> over uh, Manhattan. So that was great to work great to work with him on that, and uh, we've had a great reception. And the what's journal. the uh, URL for the Big Data Journal? That's libertpub.com, which is L-I-E-B-E-R-T-pub.com slash big. Okay, we've got to work on that. Yeah, we really <laughs> have to work on that. It's sort of bit.ly.com slash big data journals. Yeah, big data absolutely. what? Bit.ly.com slash? Uh, no, I'm making that up. Oh, okay. That's what it should be. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and how is your journey with the Big Data Journal? How has that been? That's been great so far. You know, it's a big challenge. We're doing something very different. Academic journals aren't really things that work with industry, so we're doing industry academia crossover. We're also attempting to be very multidisciplinary because even I was talking to uh, the people at the Big Data Lab at MIT, part of the CSAIL there, the IT department, and they were saying even though they have people who work on analytics and they have people who work on databases, even those people within one computer department don't talk to each other, right? So a lot of the journal world is very siloed, like that's the right pet, that's the right one. So it's a big challenge for us to bring it all together, but I think it's very much worth it and put alongside issues of policy um, uh, and sort of the, the visualization and the complementary disciplines around it. I think you know, if big data is to, thankfully it, it's not a hype thing that's going to fall off the cliff, but my idea is that it's a long game and you need uh, a journal or a body of record that's more substantive, that'll last a longer time, than mm -hmm. conferences or blog posts that right. come and go, where people can put down markers for the important ideas and move the field forward. Oh, excellent, well congratulations on getting that uh, off the ground. Um, new, new print, which is uh, right. again counterintuitive, but uh, it's, it's O'Reilly. We're, you guys we're looking for a publisher for Silk and Angle uh, print magazine. <laughs> 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 we, don't, we don't know, what to, we wouldn't know what to do, how to print it, so. It's be full of photographs yeah. of you guys. <laughs> 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 Call Rick. And then, well, thanks for coming on theCUBE and wrapping up. Uh, I'll give you the final word here, um, ending day three for our interview here, kind of you, from your perspective. Um, tell the folks out there, kind of a bumper sticker, uh, day three summarizing the entire show. How would you wrap up uh, um, Strata this year? Just fantastic energy of people who, as the conference tagline says, want to make data work. Making data work, um, doing a great job. Again, provocative, intoxicating at one end uh, and energizing and motivating on the other. Um, great resource. Strata Cars, we're proud to be uh, here at theCUBE. Uh, with O'Reilly Media and Strata Commerce. We'll be right back with John Furrier and Dave Vellante with uh, our next guest with a short break. <laughs>